Um, hello. In this short video, I'm gonna talk about Doom Emacs. So, I've installed Emacs. Uh, actually, I had Emacs. I just, um, you know, tried to use it a few days ago and found out that many parts of my configuration is real old. So, I tried to... And my friend, uh, one of my friends, uh, actually sent me his config and his config was for not the vanilla GNU Emacs actually it was for Doom Emacs so I actually installed Doom and tried to migrate my configuration to it and since then I'm using it and the experience is just great um, actually uh, about 80% of my configuration actually was there inside um, Doom Emacs, so I didn't need to um, migrate it over, and it was there. I just b b brought the, a few key bindings, and I think that's it, a few key bindings. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Emacs and specifically about Doom Emacs. So if we start from what is Emacs in general, Emacs is a Lisp interpret interpreter which happens to have a text editor inside. It's a joke, but it's actually really close to the truth. So um, you shouldn't look into Emacs or see it as you know another VS Code or another JetBrains IDE. It's not that. Emacs is like a framework. It's like giving you a framework specifically designed to create a user interface and a development tool. So it's a text editor, an IDE framework that you can build your own personalized IDE from it. And what is an Emacs distribution? There are multiple distributions out there. Most popular are uh, Space Max, which is older. There is Doom Emacs, which is, I think, the most popular. I think, I'm not sure. And also there are a few less used, for example, FG42 from my great friend and teacher, Samir. And so there are multiple distributions out there. And, it, and each one um, actually focuses on a different aspect of Emacs. So um, basically distributions are set of configurations and packages that bundled together for you to have an easier experience at Emacs, in Emacs. They're battery included, so if you just install them, you get a good um, experience. So why use Emacs in general? Let's talk about that. So Emacs is not for everyone. It has a different mindset than, for example, let's say VS Code. Uh, and it also has its own learning curve. Of course, distributions make this a lot easier, but still it's there. But it's the editor of the lifetime, they say. It means that once you learned it, once you get used to it, it's there for you until probably your, uh, for your lifetime. Because, um, because every new language will get added into it using its package ecosystem. You can customize it to be exactly what the thing you want it to be. You don't need to adapt to it. You just can change it to be anything you want. If you want to build another JetBrains out of it, just build it. If you want a VS Code out of it, just build it as a VS Code. If you want, it, if you want to build it as a Vim, just build it as a Vim. So, and I know many people, for example, Samir it's himself, that they are using Emacs for decades and they basically live inside Emacs. I mean, I know that he has uh, his note-taking solution in Emacs. I know he has his desktop environment. And yes, you can install Emacs as a desktop environment and you as a, as a window manager in Linux. So you can manage your windows and basically you log in into Emacs. And many people are living inside Emacs and they're happy. You can check your emails inside Emacs. You can check your Twitter inside Emacs. You can read R RSS feeds inside Emacs. There is an IRC client inside Emacs. There are Telegram clients inside Emacs. So basically, there is everything in Emacs. You can, you can do anything you want in it. There is no 
um, limitation to what you can do inside Emacs. So the most killer features are extensibility, extensibility, and the extensibility. There are awesome packages out there. I mean, if you want, for example, let's say you just you are a, just a normal IDE user, you want a simple IDE. You just install LSP mode, and that's it. You get support for all languages that at least VS Code supports. So VS Code has this, um, Microsoft announced this LSP, um, which stands for Language Server Protocol, which is a protocol between um, language servers that implement features for a certain language and an IDE or an editor that, ha that is the client of that server and provides you with autocomplete and stuff. So every language that has a la uh, language server is supported in Emacs just for now. So LSP mode. There are other amazing packages like org mode, which is shipped with Emacs. And it's like, I, I know people that just installed Emacs. They are not even developers or, you know, power users of um, computers. And they just use org mode as their um, writing tool, as their own Microsoft Word, as their own um, word processing software. Org mode is just amazing. Org mode is this document I'm r actually showing right now is in org mode, and you see, and it's just, you know, about maybe just 1% of this, its features. It can uh, produce HTML, it can produce PDF. Uh, it can do many things. Org mode is just amazing. Org mode can be a script itself. It can be run, it, it can be get run. And actually, I'm gonna show you my configuration, which is written in org mode. I'm gonna show you. So, also, active devel development. Emacs is not that uh, you know old um, l um, software that no one is developing anymore. It's actually actively being developed. For example, newly, not not recently, but um, it was one of the biggest updates of Emacs. Happened, I think, about a year ago or year and a half, and that was the native compilation branch. So there was this guy that uh, was working on GCC and found a way to compile down ELISP, which is Emacs, it stands for Emacs Lisp, which is Emacs scripting language. Yes, it has its own scripting language. I told you it's an interpreter. So it has, an int, uh, it has a scripting language inside. He actually worked on a way for Emacs to be able to compile its ELISP code into machine code and then cache it. And it will give an amazing um, performance boost for many plugins. So you, ca you can now, comp uh, Emacs is actually now, comp uh, by default, in background, compiles down every package you, you use um, lazily. So the next time you load it, it will basically load the machine code version, not the uh, scripted, interpreted version. And the killer features is also org mode. I mean, it's really big. You, it just counts as the... Uh, as a killer feature of its own. And also Magit, which is the Git client, and I think it's by far the best Git client that is out there. And it, these two needs their video of their own. I cannot show you um, their features just in one video. It's just, you know, waste. I'm gonna sh do videos on them probably. So Emacs what is an Emacs configuration? So Emacs configuration is simply a set of Emacs Lisp files that gets loaded, that gets run every time you open up Emacs. Or basically get run and you can add hooks, you can add um, file types, many things. You can do everything. Emacs itself, there is, no, um, there is no private stuff inside it. There's no core stuff that you cannot change. Like other editors. For example, you, you can write plugins in VS Code. You can write configurations for VS Code. But you cannot change what's inside VS Code, what's in the core. For example, you cannot change how VS Code does tabs. I don't think you can. But in Emacs, you can. In Emacs, everything is just ELISP, and ELISP has many features, um, not well implemented, but it has many features that you can basically change um, how Emacs behaves in certain uh, situations. So, yes. But this Emacs configuration is a two-edged um, two blade because the quality of the Emacs code you write, the ELISP code you write, um, affects your experience in Emacs a lot, especially the startup time. I mean, I saw many people that had startup time over 10 seconds 
This is not how you should write your configuration code. And also, Emacs has a lot of plugins and, and packages, and you don't need all of them to be personalized. I mean, LSP mode. Um, if you, you you just need to add three or four key bindings, at, if, at least for me, and I have been used Emacs on and on, um, on and off um, for around three or four years now. And I have only three or four key bindings for LSP mode, nothing really special about my LSP mode configuration. So I can, you know, agree on this shared config that everyone uses. But if I want to write my Emacs configuration from scratch, I need to have everything. I need to have configuration for each package I installed, which is um, which most of them don't need a specific personal configuration. And also, searching your config is also needs time and experience, and you you find yourself many times rewriting and rewriting this. There's ev even a um, there is even an expression for this. They call this Emacs bankruptcy, me which means that you cannot um, handle the your configuration anymore, you cannot develop it, so you start over. This is called Emacs bankruptcy. So, okay, so what is Doom Emacs? So Doom Emacs is a framework. It's not um, just, you know, set of configurations that someone had and shared on internet, on, on GitHub, and everyone should use that. It's just a framework that you can customize and personalize, yet it is completely useful outside the box. So if you install it, it will work. You just need to enable some modules if you want. There are even the pre-default enabled. I'm going to show you what is the configuration. It's modular, so you don't need to, you know, install a package that you don't use. You don't need to install um, a hook. You don't use nothing will affect your startup if you don't use it. So you basically don't pay for uh, and everything. Every module can be disabled, so it's a modular. It has more than 500 contributors on GitHub. It means that it is an active project, and it has big community support. If you go to the GitHub, they have um, or they are already f every few hours there is a new commit. Doom Emacs of of almost all of the times is faster than your personal handwritten config because it has its really. Um, not, not, I'm not going to say sophisticated, but um, it has its own way of customizing your Emacs and compiling everything down, generating a specific type of auto loads. Um, it's okay if you don't know what is an auto load. It's an Emacs um, thing that, which helps Emacs to know where a function definition or a variable is defined without actually loading anything. So Doom has a lot of um, c plugins, like, like LSP stuff, like company mode, which is for auto completion. And it has many of them pre-installed and pre-configured. You don't need to configure them. Um, you don't need to configure anything. I mean, company mode just works out of the box. And finally, Doom Emacs is evil mode, um, is built for evil mode. So what is an evil mode? Modes are e in Emacs are the way Emacs do its own kind of modules. So it's basically a way for Emacs to enable or disable a, a piece of code a, or a package. So evil mode is, a, as in a, is an Emacs package that emulates Vim key bindings. Emacs default key bindings are not as friendly as Vim are. I mean, they are a bit harder to work with, especially if you have your control placed not in a good place in your keyboard, so it's going to be harder. So e Doom Emacs configures evil mode and all of its packages to give you the best experience um, possible. So evil mode is a first citizen inside Doom Emacs. So for the final thing in this video, let me show you my fi configuration file, which you see that it is only this config.org, and org is for org mode um, configurations, uh, org mode files. So this is my Doom Emacs configuration. You can see that I have really small amount of things. I mean, I just setting my names and emails. These are the modules I enable for Doom, and I'm doing everything inside this just one file. And you see that there are uh, many many things. There are tools and everything I enable LSP in here, and there are languages that I'm going to enable to have support for both synt syntax and also the LSP. Okay. So there is also just small amount of configuration. So the dashboard, I'm going to make it minimal, theme, mod line, font. And you see that these are really small amount of code. These are just the codes 
that gets uh, basically um, run every time I launch my Emacs. This is the, probably the most configuration I have for ERC. There is this LSP. You, th you see I have these three key bindings for going to definition and stuff. And that is basically it. So this is basically my configuration. And you see any, everything else is handled inside Doom. And it's now faster. I have this faster config um, than my personal config. And it also works really well. So I hope you install Doom Emacs and um, enjoy. Kudos to the creator, Hendrik Listener, I think. how It's how pronounced. And it's really amazing uh, software. I really, I'm really liking it after, um, and it made me Emacs for me feasible again. So thanks for watching. If you like this video and this content, please like this video and subscribe. And um, you can um, you can contact me on Twitter, mail, GitHub. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, goodbye.